Oh my god, we're recording. You guys didn't even notice my background. You haven't even I commented. Did. I did it for you guys. Wait, I, I can only see Channing's side eye, his one eye. Oh, that's it? That's all I can see. Now? Your hair looks nice, Allie. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, you can't see it because, oh, you know why you can't see it? Because you guys are on the screen actually here in real person, in real life. Oh. It's fine. You're blown up behind me. It's great. Um, <clears throat> welcome into this edition of Road Trippin'. Allie Clifton, me, of course, his name is Channing Fry, and Richard Jefferson. Richard's in a suit. Came dressed Richard for the occasion. On, um, no, Richard well, was on TV today. Yeah, we have a thing called, called fucking post tapes. Let me just say this for all the future people out there. Don't tell somebody 30 minutes through the show, hey, we have two post tapes after the show. One, one of the reasons why it's a little fun is because we only have a little gap between the next show, NBA Countdown, that we're doing. So it's like, hey, I know you guys got like a 90-minute break, but we're going to take 20 minutes of that. And you were like, well, I was supposed to eat or, at, or I got a podcast that I told you. So I'm a little fired up. So if my energy is a little sideways, it's because I'm wearing a suit. I don't have a drink. I'm got to oh, go Channing. back. Channing is covering the drinks for you. Please. Which, which Richard, didn't you have enough? <laughs> Haven't you had enough drinks? Oh, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm Wait, where'd you, where'd you go? Shellbacks? No, no, no. One of the Volley Boys had, uh, uh, they had uh, a birthday party last night. So got No blown. chosen, huh? Tight. No, no, it wasn't. It was more of a shot whiskey night than it was like a wine dinner night. You know what? I've been getting into bourbon lately. Bourbon on the rocks has been, dude. I'm, it's, I get it. It'll get you I where you it. gotta go. I, I might have, I might have mixed alcohols. That, that was Ooh, weird. Stupid. Was weird. It, you know, in that Richard, moment, you look good, Richard. What you on Ozempic? <clears throat> no. <laughs> <clears throat> mm -mm. You need to clear your throat. Maybe you could get the same procedure done that Channing did. Let's transition. Oh. We should get an update. How did your procedure go, <laughs> let, Channing? Let, let, For all of those right. that want to know, this is what was pulled out of Channing's throat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Squeeze. You got to squeeze. It's a couple. It's about three, four millimeters. So here's the scar. There it is. Dude. They really had Wait. to open that bitch up. First of all, Channing, that is yeah. not healthy. I feel like that's what Rich's comment was. Like, that came out of your Do you remember neck. last week when I was pointing at that gigantic ball right here? It's not yeah. there anymore. It's just swollen. It was huge. Yes. It's like this big. Honestly, I would rather keep that bulge than to have that <laughs> mark across your neck looking like yeah. John Wick got It's you. not going to look like this forever. It's, it's going to heal. This still has the uh, stitches on him. it. Oh, he's fine. <laughs> It's still, I listen, it still has the stitches and then it's actually in a crease. So when the swelling goes down uh, and I gain some weight, it'll just roll over into itself. <laughs> Hi, Margo, come here. When you get off Ozempic? How's, Hi. oh my God. How's oh, yeah, Margo? Yeah, for sure. Will Margo come over? Yeah, yeah and this one had uh, had to have emergency eye surgery. Oh my God, she's so Hi, Margo. Margo. Yeah, how you doing? You say hi to everybody. How you feel? Your hair's so like pretty. Mine. Cookies? What kind of cookies? cookies. Snickerdoodle me. Go. Go lay down. Go look at Barbie. What did you just say? me. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, how old is she? She's there? good. That was crazy. Yeah, she basically, you know, she had cataracts when she was born, so she was blind. They had to have surgery. She doesn't have lenses on her eyes. Wow. So, like, the pressure in her eye is regulated by, like, um medicine and just kind of her body figuring it out and she was at a basketball game with friends and somebody was throwing a ball and it popped her in the eye and it mm. jostles some things and so imagine you know your body regulates your eye girth or whatever it is in the back of your head so imagine i'm the worst uh headache ever for an 11 year old girl and then they had to get a needle in her eye and uh relieve all that pressure and so Two days later, she's shout out OHSU KCI Institute. If you ever need some something with eyes, it is no joke. Now I don't know. I couldn't do what she did. Me in the neck, no big deal. Needles in the eye, nah, nah, nah. nah. What a nah. champ! What a champ! And that's yeah, what she is two household. days later. That's incredible. Yeah, well, she's she got to chill out, right? But she she yeah. can't put contacts on. Got to get her glasses. But yeah, we you know shit. Life is life. 
can always be peaches and cream. Oh, but when it is. All right, man, let's talk, let's talk some basketball. Don't worry about what the fuck I'm doing. And your health and Richard's hangovers. I will say that, God, I know we all know this. Hangovers are not great the older you get, whether it's a day older, minutes older, hours, like whatever. Why? Why does that happen? Someone needs your to body, give an action. Your body doesn't have yeah, Your body doesn't recover. It doesn't. But really. it's so fun when you're doing it. No, well, yeah, it's always it's always that way. You just don't. But I think for me, I I'm normally pretty good. Today was a tough one because it was like still got to take the kids to school. Still didn't come in here. Got a long day. We I you know it was it was just still yeah. So I'm struggling. Okay. I'm Fuzzy. struggling. Yeah. And no right. matter what I do, no, no matter what medicine or concoctions I have, it's like I got to give myself till 6 p.m. the next day and then I'll be fine. It used to be three. It used to be 11. It used to be like a nap and some spicy food and a beer and I'm good. Nah, homie. It's like 6 p.m. Oh. Your boy got the shakes till six. Uh, and then uh, that's yeah. it burrito and a beer you're good to go right what are we doing tonight oh, what? you start asking that question at 11 11 a.m like, ah, what are we doing tonight i'm a little beat up but hey we going out again we, yep okay i'll going? see you there we go gentlemen Ooh. this is a great segue into basketball chanting as you have asked to talk about um because someone who never had a hangover and you guys have some of the best stories when y'all would go out and then have to meet the bell, rise to the occasion, weight room, whatever it was at 7 a.m. with your former teammate, LeBron. Um, he became the only player over the weekend, we saw it, to score 40,000. Um, I was there. The one thing I will say What were you doing there? Working. <laughs> saw, our, saw our good friend, Perk Lurk. Big Perk. Um, I saw Big Perky Lurky. Sat with him for the first half. But having said that, Braun had about three possessions where he sat on seven points. Um, and he needed nine, of course. The way in which our society communi communicates, consumes information. They would rise with their cell phones to capture the moment. Then they would all sit together when the ball went the other way. They would rise back. Not one person watched that, I feel like, live. It was all through a freaking cell phone screen. Wild. Insane. 40,000. It's who we are. Also, 40,000. I was trying to put this in context for my children. Please do it. I think I think I said, here's how many shots I made, right? <laughs> here's how many shots I attempted, okay? And I played 13 years. It was like 7,000 points or so, 8,000 points. And I was like, Hendrix, times that by five. He was like, okay, what do you mean? I go, Hendrix, imagine if I just ran into the gym and shot it 30 times every game for 20 straight years. I still would not have 40,000 points. If I shot 20 times a game for 20 straight years, I maybe still wouldn't have 40,000 points. No, no. And also... What's fucked up? Nobody talks about it. he's a scorer. They devalue what he's done. Well, he hits this longevity. Bitch, there's nobody else that's had longevity like that. Also, he's 40, and he's still averaging 25. Oh, well, well it's this league is this. And he's more efficient now than everyone else in the NBA, which is a fact. I looked up this crazy fact because I knew what I was getting on today. He is shooting. From the rim, 65%. I think he's top three in the league at forward position. From the three-point line, I think he's shooting, what is it like? 40. He's 40, like 40. 40, which is one of his highest ever, okay? Also, for people who go, oh, you know, teams just jack and do this or that, the three-point shot this year has actually evened out to a mid-range in layup. Because more people are just shooting to shoot and more people are, or a lot of teams are shooting to shoot, but more teams are relying on that mid range, like the Clippers, like Phoenix and having success. So everyone's like, shoot the three, no mid range layup free throw. It's changing. Now the league is going back to the three tier level and where the mid range is just as valuable as a three point shot. And LeBron is still averaging 25 points. So, so 
the I the you know you start seeing all the things going around. The fact that he scored more points than Larry and Magic combined is disgusting. It's disgusting. Insane. They're, that like the fact that the fact that he's passed. Did he pass Magic and assist? Yeah, he's I feel like he, yeah, he passed. No, he's not second. He's not second. I, I he's but fourth. I think he, he's fourth. It's Mark is Jackson, he, Jason he, Kidd. In no, I like rebounding numbers. He he still got some ways to go. He's he, he, or, 30th or something. Yeah, I have he, he oh, a ways to go. No before, we, but no, before we start talking about him with the all times, with the all time, like I have some really 30th, have, Richard. No, but my point this and and people this uh, people might say Le, LeBron could score fifty thousand points. He could score fifty thousand points. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. What I am saying is this: If he was okay, okay with us, a, a, a decline. If he was like, I want to play five more years. If he wanted to go Tom Brady and say, I want to play till I'm 45 years old. That's what I want to do. I think, given let's say each year he lower, you know, it goes to 25 to 22 to 18 to whatever it is. I think he could. I think he could come close to 50 if he wanted to keep playing. Yeah. Until yeah, until right. the until the doors until the doors were or until the wheels fall off. If he wanted to do that, I think he could come close to fifty thousand, which is fucking nuts. Nick Such Wright put song. it. Yeah, Nick Wright made a good point. He goes, "KD is one of the best, if not the most unstoppable scorer we can agree in the league when he wants to." He goes, "Right now, KD would have to play a minimum of seven more years in average thirty to get to where LeBron is." And that's just to get to where LeBron is today. So imagine that. So today, LeBron is still scoring. Let's say he stops it this year and it's at 4,500. KD would have to play seven and a half seasons, almost eight more seasons, in average 30 to get to those many points. And this is coming from a guy that just but learned but, how to but shoot it's, free. But it's, just, but it's the same. It's the same for the finals. Or like, or, I mean, for the playoffs, he has the playoff record, and you're gonna have to play. You're gonna have to go to ten NBA Finals and average thirty. That's what you're gonna have to do. <laughs> Which he's already at fifty thousand, or he's approaching fifty thousand with the postseason. Yeah, included, I would, right? Imagine this: yeah. somebody gets a thirty point game in the finals, and you're like, dude, that dude balled out. This dude was getting forty point triple doubles on the regular, and they're like. Oh, well, his team is really good. You're like, wait, bitch, what? <laughs> you know how okay, hard so it is to even get on the court? I have some career uh, numbers for Braun with NBA ranks. Are you ready okay. for this? Because we did top yeah. five leading into his 40,000 point. Uh, by the way, that other stat that he got from zero to 10,000 in the same amount of games as he did from 30 to 40,000. Did you guys see that? Yeah, I saw that. 368 games. Yeah, it was like iconic. The games, the game, it, it, but it's, but it was all, th- I think, I feel like each gap was, or each like increment was like 300 and like 60. Did any of them hit? I'm so saying they- from oh. zero to 10,000, he did it in 368 from 10 to 20 K. He did it in 358, 20 to 30. He did it in 381, 30 to 40, 368. Come on, man. That's insane. You talk about consistency. Come on. <laughs> well, can you talk okay, so about here where, are his where's ranks. the Olympics in this too? Because not like he's not tired. These are all Nobody top takes 10. Into consideration. Rebounds was on this, but it's 30th. 30th, yeah. 30th, 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 31st. <laughs> Games played, where do you think he is in top 10? Uh, one. Seventh. 1,472 games played. Minutes. I don't even know if I had that many points. <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Number one in minutes. Number one in minutes. He's not. Number two. At 55,875. <laughs> uh, first in points. This was before, by the way, the Clipper game, which happened two games before the 40th. You're fine. Yeah, it, it, he's, assist. He's, How many assists does he have and where is he at? Fourth. He already said it. Yeah. What's he got? 10,821. 8, what does yeah. uh, uh, John Stockton have? 15,000. 15? God damn. No one, I don't, and then how about this one? He is top eight in what defensive category? Steals. Steals? Yeah. Not- He's eighth at 2,251. Who's number one? doing shit out there. John Stockton. In steals? Is John Stockton number one in steals all time? That's a good no, question. Is he? Um. Anyways, 
Wow. Lots of numbers, lots of buckets, lots of points. He's pretty good at basketball. Yeah, yeah, he's he's pretty good at basketball. Let's round that out. I mean, Um, 1A, 1B. Transition into Kevin Durant uh, because it was the Kevin Durant show, especially in overtime last night. Janie, we were talking about this game. He scored 35. Uh, beat the Nuggets on the road in overtime, 117-107. They were without Devin Booker as well. Uh, Katie outscored Denver's entire team in that overtime period. He also passed Dirk on the all-time three-pointers list in the win. Um, do you guys think that Kevin Durant is still the NBA's most deadliest player at any given time? Yes. No. Yeah, at any given time? Not at not all not On at any all given time. night. On any on given any night. Given night. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not diminishing KD, but I watched that whole game. It was an amazing game. And I was getting ready to tweet, Denver got levels. I think Phoenix was up nine. They they were playing like shit in that fourth quarter. I think they're one of the worst fourth quarter teams in this new year. And KD, by the way, I saw the the Laker Denver game live on Saturday. They do have levels, and the levels are insane. It's ridiculous. (laughs) Whether they won or uh, lost last (laughs) night, their levels are insane. It's, it's wild because they're like, oh, you need us to, oh, you want this? Oh, you you want this? You want eight of nine down the stretch? You want us to hit every shot and stop you from getting any kind of bucket? Got you. Got Onto you. The net. Well, here's, In two minutes. Here's, yes. Here's why I say no. And here's why I say Jokic over KD. KD can take over a game when it comes to his scoring, and I think his defense is underrated. I think when you have Jokic, his ability to – stop momentum immediately three layup like if somebody's on a fast break easy outlet passes like he is the most unstoppable guy in the league I just don't know if KD commands every aspect of the game as much as Jokic does I think KD is far and away a better offensive threat but I think in defensive but like scoring wise but I think Jokic is like the best game controller in the in the NBA right now. I, I agree. What was the question again, Allie? <laughs> if I think that the NBA's most deadliest player is still Kevin Durant on any given deadliest. night. Deadliest. Yeah, Jokic. He can get you a layup. You're you're so down Jokic, six. Jokic is about to be the MVP. Jokic is about to be the MVP. So he's gonna do that every single What are you know doing? what I mean? Y or B? What, I know. I just realized. So there's been this thing going around about how like people are graffitiing like the downtown LA area. I didn't realize that it's right outside the window. I've seen these pictures online, and then I look right outside. These motherfuckers. Hey, ADD. No. Okay. Okay. But this brings me to my next point. Did you idiots by not you? Did you see the idiots that broke into uh, the Clippers new arena? And we're like, oh, ready? you didn't see it. These no. dudes were FaceTime. They, these dudes were recording themselves, f- b- like breaking stuff, fire extinguishers, running through it, going up to the rafters, recorded themselves. Here, I'll Post- be a great host for you. Media. Go check out Richard's TikTok or his Instagram. There's a video of it. And he breaks it down side by side. Back to Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's the whiskey is still sideways in me. I'm sorry. I apologize to all of our listeners. I love you guys. You guys have all been there, so just stick with us. Kevin Durant's pretty good at basketball. I think, for instance, Jason Tatum, late game, he's struggling to, like, I won't say struggling. He's 13%. Had, 13% he's had, is he's had, what he's shooting from he's three. Had but Kevin Durant, you go one four flat, and that man just gets you a bucket. You go one four flat. I want to be, t- I wanna be, be very honest. There is not a player that I feel less equipped to guard in a 1-4 flat than Kevin Durant. Because there's nothing – think about this. Yeah, Kyrie, he might juke you. He might do all this stuff. Fine, whatever. I'm going to force you downhill. I'm not going to give up a three, whatever. Kevin Durant, if he wants to shoot a three, he's going to get a three. Right? There's nothing – that it's he can step back. He's seven feet. He's, he's the length. So I look at that and to say that there's – there's not a player, in my opinion, that I've played against that if you're in a 1-4 flat, you're really going to – what do you do? There's nothing There's nothing to do. LeBron, right, oh, we'll live with a three, or maybe I'll get into his – it don't matter with KD. He steps into it, and it's just like 
it's a wet ball. That 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 just to me because of his height, his ability to get it off. Even if I played the best defense, he can still knock it down. Denver's that, defense was solid, but solid. last night, but Aaron dude, Gordon, he was just Aaron like, Gordon, oh yeah, I'm seven foot. Aaron Gordon, like, Aaron Gordon's like yeah. Aaron Gordon, six ten with a forty inch vertical, or six nine with a forty inch vertical. Man, right. Right. He didn't even Kevin Durant didn't even see him. No. Okay, we'll talk about the East in a second, but coming off of that conversation, when you look at the top of the West, 20 games to go, you got the Timberwolves holding that number one seed. You got OKC right be- a half a game behind them in number two. Denver, a game behind the number one seed. Who finishes one, two, three? What's the order look like after 20 games when it's all said and done? Who's your top three seeds? Oof. Uh, I'm gonna say well, I'm gonna say Denver one. Uh, Minnesota 2, OKC 3, because I think what's happened is Denver sees the end of the season and they understand we need to win these games. But you know what? On that same point, before I even say it, if they're 1, 2, or 3, they may want to – who's sixth right now? I don't have my shit out. Oh, I just looked. Um, Pelicans? Pelicans, yeah. They may stay 3. Why be one and you got to play the Lakers or Golden State? Nah, homie. <laughs> You're cool. <laughs> I'm cool. I I'll play, go, I'll play Pelicans. Down the stretch. I think um, I'll, um, So I six, think, okay. I'm sorry, Pelicans are five. Ooh. And a game behind them in the sixth seed are the Suns. And then the Ooh. Kings are seven, Dallas eight, LA nine. Warriors nah, nine. I might be one or two. Listen, I'll take my chances with the Kings. I'll take my chances with Dallas. Dude, I thought Dallas would be better after the break. Their defense is shitty, but I never put in consideration. When you get two guys from losing teams, it's going to take them a while to get used to playing actual winning basketball, which they've said, I've not played winning basketball my whole career. So, like, that's one thing I forgot to bring. Um, I would say Denver, OKC, or Denver, Minnesota, OKC. I'm going to say OKC. I think those boys really want the number one seed. I think they want the number one seed from a standpoint of like they look at I, I feel like they're looking at it as a let's check the box, right? Like when you have a young, really good team, you're like, hey, we want to get the number one seed. We want to win a playoff game. We want to get to the finals. We, want, You know what I'm saying? Like there's certain steps along the way that you want to achieve. And I think those boys want to be the number one seed. I don't think Denver gives a shit if they're the one, number one seed, right? If it comes down to the last last game of the year, and is OKC going to play all their guys or is Denver going to play all their guys? I think OKC would play their guys. I think Denver would concede uh, the two seed or the three seed. I think they would concede because they know that they have those levels where I think OKC is very, very adamant about it. And I think Minnesota is going to try extremely hard. I don't. I think I, if I were to say, I think it'd be OKC, Denver, then Minnesota in the top three. You know, okay. I just sucks. I'm not bought. I want to. I'm not bought in by OKC or Minnesota or the Kings. I'm just not. Does, let me just ask you this, and it has nothing yeah. to do necessarily with the Lakers, but we're we're coming off that matchup with the Lakers on Monday between the Thunder and OKC. In terms of experience, because I think that's the biggest thing when it comes to the Thunder in the postseason. Do you think they'll be able to handle themselves when they get there? From that, like, can they win a round? Can they? Yeah. No, I don't think. Yes. If they play the Lakers, here's what I'm going to say. And I've said this. I think the Lakers have zero chance to win a championship. But to me, OKC is going to take a game or two to, to figure out adjustments, how to play, physicality, different refing, you know, this isn't the regular season. We're going to need you to do what you do even better. Now, to ask that of that young team is a lot. We've asked them to be their best version of themselves all year, and it goes, hey, that was good. We need plus five? No, because right now you're seeing LeBron and AD at a seven or eight. They could turn that motherfucker up to 11, 12. Yeah, but I I think okay, 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 so. Okay, see. So let's just go from the four teams in the play in. Do we are are even like let's go five. Do we think OKC can beat Sacramento? Yes. Do we think OKC can beat um the Pelicans? I think it'd be good. I don't I like the Pelicans. I like the Pelicans. Okay, that's like fair. Them, but I'll say yes. They can. Do you think, they do you think that they could beat Dallas? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. 
And now the one thing that we're going to say is that the Lakers haven't played great. Golden State hasn't played great, but the experience factor, that's what we would give to them over that. So if we're really, do you think, if the only teams that we don't think OKC can beat are the Clippers. They won't play them in the first round. Do you think they can beat Minnesota? I don't think so. Well, they won't play them in the first round, and they won't play Denver in the first round. So those yeah. are the three teams that they won't play. Then there's a whole list of teams that are within their within that eight spot right, that yeah. drop to the play. The Suns? Can they beat the Suns? No. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. will be interesting. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what's going to make it fun. Is that yeah. very rarely do you see a number one seed or even a number two seed that everyone's like, yeah. What well, we saw with Utah, Minnesota is the new Utah. No, but Utah, but Utah. They won the first round, got in the second round, and then shit the bed, and then they broke it up, right? But they still won a round. They still they won. Lost. We're True. saying they you're trying to OKC ain't going to win a round. I don't think this um, year they do. I think next year they do. I okay, think, I really want to get to the Cavs-Boston game, but hang on, because you kind of touched on it, Channing, so I'll just stay out west. The Mavericks, what we're seeing from them post-All-Star, the last-ranked team defensively since the break. How much does it fall on Jason Kidd? How much is there more to this? Luca, uh, Doncic, they just lost to the Pacers by 17, 137-120 on Tuesday. Luca joined Oscar and Russell Westbrook as the only players to notch three straight 35-point triple doubles. But Dallas has lost all three of those games. They're now 6-6 six and six when uh, Luca has a 30-point triple double. You've added two pretty, I would say, substantial pieces. So... Instead of looking at Kleba and Powell and do things by committee, you've added two big guys that now are going to take up a big bunch of that time. I thought P.J. Washington would be a little bit more aggressive, but when you play with Luke and Kyrie and they're going, you're going to get the scraps. <laughs> so he's had a six game. He's had a 10 game. He's had a 14 game. So he's having solid games, but like, He's not really making the impact right now that I thought he would. And Tim Hardaway Jr. just hasn't been shooting the ball very well. If he's not shooting the ball well, you're just going to double-team Luka and take your chances, right? Because most of them do things on their own. And you're like, I'm living with Tim Hardaway beating me. I'm living with P.J. Washington. And then guess what? Because Luka's double-teamed, he's not as engaged as much on the defensive end. And we're going to go at him every single time. And now you're in rotation and you're trying to teach rotations and energy and playoff levels and culture to guys that have been on teams. Gafford came off a team that's won nine games all season. He don't know what the fuck winning looks like or smells like. Yeah, and, but and PJ but Washington, Washington in Charlotte. We, 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 we talk about PJ Washington. That's like fucking talking about like D'Angelo Russell and right. D'Angelo and talking about, you know, Torian Prince. Right. These guys are additions to what they are doing, right? Totally. They're additions to what they're... No, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Yes, it takes them a while. I think their problems are deeper than a couple of guys. They Collectively, I think uh, Kyrie and Luka is not a great defensive backcourt, right? But it's a least it of offensively. And so when you start looking at who you're going to play around them, Tim Hardaway Jr., he's not elite defensively. Lively has helped them a lot with what they do, and they've got some other pieces. But they do they do need to collectively improve. I think that they can do something if they can get stop having the worst defense in the league and kind of get to just be 20th. Be 20th. Don't be last. Be, be last. Don't be, be below yeah. don't be average. Last. I used to hate that because I'm slow. Don't be last. I'm like, bitch, I'm last every day. I'm consistent. Who would I'm win in fast. a race between you two? Richard, God, it's not even close. Are you joking? Really? I don't even like to. Re I don't even like getting the runs when I take dumps. More or less, run. <laughs> Richard is a runner. Richard runs. Richard, Channing why are you dog. looking at me like that? Because I am that's a, a fit. really wild question. That, that's, that's almost disrespectful towards yeah, Richard. Thank you, Channy. Thank you. Like I'm a sprinter. I, I <laughs> yeah. not not. not stiff, You're a I, sprinter. I've sat in those workouts. You were a sprinter. Richard yeah. runs a lot. First, okay, yes, you you sat in those workouts, huh? How old was I? 
Oh, we're going to throw the age out there? No, I'm saying I was Because the second it comes to winning a title, it's like, I was 36 and I played 36 minutes. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to win. I'm not trying to win sprints at 36. It's not, I'm not, I wasn't trying to win that shit. But you tell me to sprint. You tell me to sprint. I would like to say that in my prime, I was, hear me out. In my prime, I was probably top three, top four fastest in my position. Really? No. Well, remember, we were a, we were a fast break team with Jason Kidd. We were fucking gone. We were sprinting. And you're the three. Way. I'm saying I said that I was top three or four in my position. Or four. <laughs> no, top three or four. I'm saying top three or four fastest. Okay. I, I'm not going to disrespect. Did you ever run track? Yes. What were your races? Uh, well, I did. When I, was, I was 100, 200, 400. And oh, okay, I say less. Okay. Yeah. I'll give so, it to you then. Yeah, like I'm talking about. I got the, I got the steps. I got, I got the burst. I got the quick. Are you a heel to toe or run on your toe? Come on, come on, man. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Like, just he go said, type, in, type in New Jersey net fast break and watch us go 94 feet. <laughs> There's a difference between running a fast break and sprinting. Okay. No, um, it's very. See. Right okay. There. Um. That, that's a that's a secret. Don't tell anybody. I don't know if you guys answered my question. Is that a Jason Kidd defensive problem or a team problem? Team problem. Ooh, team, team problem. problem. Team problem. Who's the defender on that team? Fair. Thanks for answering the question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We uh, have been talking about the Cavs. How about the uh, Kelsey brothers? Love them. I mean, can I tell you, too? I was watching. Obviously, they were courtside. Poor guys were right behind JB, damn near half the entire time. JB would just stop right there. But nonetheless, Travis was standing up the entire time. Every time they would do something well, I was like, now that is a fan. Like that love He's the from spirit. Cleveland. Love all y'all are the same. Oh boys. All I know we oh are. Boys. But and look, I, I would say this about Cleveland. There's not a ton, it's not, you know, it's not LA, it's not this, it's not like one of these cities. But the people from Ohio. In any relation, they they show up and support the Cavs. Who uh, who was the the MMA fighter? What's his name? Steep, Steep, Steep. Steep he a. would show up. Yeah, Steep a would show up all the time to the games. There would always be like, if you're an Ohio person, I get people that I didn't even know from like celebrities and random people come up to me that are from Ohio and fucking give so much love. So I Richard, not would you go to Ohio this summer before the bugs come out? Would I? <laughs> Just for one, two days, two days, Richard. I, I would, I, I honestly, I would like to go there and catch a game. No lie. Can I tell I, you I would, that I invited I, you guys to my lake property and Channing's reaction was, there's too many damn mosquitoes. It's not even in Ohio. I mosquitoes. I live in Portland. I didn't know it wasn't in Ohio. <laughs> my lake property? It's in Michigan. Yeah. I didn't it's know the it Midwest, wasn't. idiots. I, 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 look, I understand. And I know you grew up on the border and all that stuff, but I'm saying this. I did not for the whole time you told me about it. I remember seeing <laughs> pictures when you bought it. I thought it was in Ohio. <laughs> no idea. No um, idea. Richard yeah. lives in Manhattan Beach, and I live in a city of bridges and rivers. Why in the God's fucking good green earth would we go to a lake with bugs and moss? So you, in well, first of all, first of all, first of all, I'm not gonna let him disrespect. I'm not. Yeah, gonna I'm offended. Actually, I am one thousand. Yeah, I'm not gonna insulted. let him. Dis- it was almost as disrespectful as you asking who would win in a race between Chad. That, that, and that's a level of dis- almost as disrespectful. The what people I, wanted to know. No, no they know. I they, would tell they, them. They know. That's why I take the ball out. I'm the oh, slowest. No. First of all, the pontoon boat, the pontoon boat, the drinking, the, the food, I, I, mm-hmm. I, the jet skis. I, I, I'm not going to hate on Richard, that. Richard, I have all that here, and I'm only two and a half hours away, buddy. And Allie got a baby pontoon boat. They don't even have a system. Damn, why are you hating, bro? Ellie hate got the 18 footer. I got the 24. That's not even true. Two, it does have a, like, just goodbye. Steph Curry makes you believe you can do anything. And the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. 
The Cray 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual density UA flow cushioning and traction. It's an emergency break you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of a sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep Under Armour wherever you go. Do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. <laughs> Let's go on to our um, top players in your minds from last week. There are our Under Armour Game Changers of the Week. Which players or coaches impressed you the most? In the last week? I'm going to say – no, no, no. I, no, no, no. Real talk. I, players are coach. I'm going to say the, the Cavs because Struess and what D, uh, D. Wade did, that to me – No, you got to say it right. Dean Wade. D. Wade. D. Wade. D. Wade. Dean. D. No, he's still D. Wade. I'm giving him his, like <laughs> – Are you paying him? No, are you but saying my, but Pam? I'm, put those two are you guys Pam? in the fourth quarters Pam? for the Cavs, right? Like 20, point, 20 point in a quarter, Struce with a half court shot. Like those two guys, I, I got to give them some love because to be on a great team and then to be contributing in an individual manner and playing out of body, which both of them did, you got to give them some love. Uh, you know what? It's hard to like them right now, but they're growing on me. The Milwaukee Bucks. Like, yeah, they are. They're they're fucking winning. Like maybe we roasted Doc Rivers too soon, but they've been beating it. They beat Minnesota. They've had some big wins. I think they're six and zero. So it's like uh, not my favorite team to watch all the time. But yeah, like yeah. wins are wins. Nice. You give know, their, give them the respect. Road Trip Game Changers of the Week. They're sponsored by Under Armour. Do your thing. Change the game. The Curry Eleven Future Curries are available now at currybrand.com. Question. No, we're going to talk about it first. I was gonna, no, we're going to do this first. Sorry. It's not all over the place. Um, did you, you guys over see that, <laughs> no, that Sportico just released their list of NBA team valuations for this season? What is a Sportico? Sportico is a, a company that puts out their, their valuations for the most valuable teams. And they have NBA ones, and then they have sports teams. So I want to see if you guys can guess the five top NBA teams. Lakers, State, I want the orders too because you're wrong, Richard. And then I want also overall sports. Knicks. So let's start with the um, NBA. No. Uh, Golden State. Golden Lakers. State is one. Knicks. Knicks is two. Lakers. Three. Yeah, I, I don't. Why'd you say I was wrong? I said Knicks, Golden State. I wanted State. order. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh,. <laughs> I don't want to say Miami. Nope. Nope. Uh, Bro- no, it can't be Brooklyn. Nope. Dallas. Chicago. Chicago is five. Oh, wow. What's four? The Warriors. Are- Phoenix? Nope. Clippers. No. <laughs> they paid $2 billion for those bad boys, too. Dallas? Dumb. Nope. No idea. It's in the east. Toronto? Boston. Nope. Boston. Celtics. Boston. 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 Shit. So the Warriors are valued at $8.28 billion. The Bulls at number five, $4.83. Let's go. And they want shit. Let's go bottom five, starting from 26 oh. to 30. Memphis. Utah. Charlotte. No, Utah's higher than that, I bet. Yep. Memphis. Utah's not on that list. Yeah. Memphis. Number Charlotte. 29. Oh, God. Charlotte, 27. Atlanta. New Orleans. New Orleans is 30th. Yeah, I believe 2. it. 2.7 anybody, anybody got time for that? What about Detroit? Trash? No, nope. Detroit's, no, Detroit, no, Detroit's not. Two more. One East or one West? What? Both in the Portland. West. Both in the West and both playoff teams. OKC. Oh. OKC is 26. And no, Minnesota? Yeah. Uh, yep. Minnesota. Minnesota, 28th. Wild. Okay, this is this is fun too, though. Overall, of all sports franchises, the NBA has three of the top five. So obviously, you know it goes in that order: Warriors, Knicks, Lakers. Two, three, four. Who is the most valued Yankees. sports franchise? No, Cowboys, Cowboys, Cowboys. So this Cowboys is what are I- number one. The Yankees are five. 
So this is my question. You said the Warriors are worth eight billion. Warriors then, are eight point two eight. Yep. And who's number two? The Knicks seven point four. Okay. Okay. The okay. Lakers seven point three. Cowboys nine point five. Watch, watch this shit. Watch, see, this is the difference. This is the difference with the Warriors, and I say this respectfully. Like they're going to always be like San Francisco. They're always going to be. A, 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 it's going to be. I'm very curious as to when the change happens. Like the Lakers are always the Lakers. The Celtics are always the Celtics. The the Yankees are always the Yankees. The Cowboys are always the Cowboys. Like we've seen a great run from Golden State, and they've always been a high valued franchise just because of their location and 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 the fan base. I'm just curious, uh, like the Steph Curry effect, right? The Steph, the, the Steph Curry effect when that changes, and that I just, I'm curious. I'm curious to that. Like, I don't think that they are the number one from a standpoint of they built a new arena, they're generating so much money. I just don't know if that's a long last. I don't know if they're a legacy franchise. I don't. That's what I'm saying. All the teams that we hear up there, it, it does. It doesn't matter. Like. Yankees, our kids, our grandfathers, our great grandfathers, those, those are the Warriors. I'm curious to see if they can sustain this. I don't think they're the Cowboys, America's team. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you think, are I, you yeah. surprised that the Yankees are five on that list? No. No, uh, you're not. They surprised? haven't been very good for a while. They have not been good for a while. I, I, they've been, been solid, but not like Yankees dominant. Their brand is so crazy amazing it doesn't even make sense like a yankees fitted is the hat there's no other hat to wear and how do they do these rankings because i wonder it's like the warriors play 41 games they play 41 games at home um the the yankees play and they have they can fit triple what the warriors fit in and they play a hundred and what are they play? Uh, they play 160 games, so half of those at home, right? Like, think about that. So it's like in valuation, yeah, but not as many people go to like the Tuesday matinee game. They may have like you know a double header. Uh, agree, but they, there's they still, there's. But, but what I'm saying is that even what they get on that Tuesday mat would fill in an NBA arena. Totally, it would How fill about in. This? How about that? All 32 NFL teams made the top 100 with all but two the Jaguars and Bengals. And additionally, all 30 NBA teams made the top 100. Revenue sharing? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm curious as to like how the Yankees are mm-hmm. how the Yankees are below the NBA I, franchises. Do they subtract the amount of contracts they give out to their estimated value? But, yeah, that's because the Yankees are giving out crazy and other than Aaron Judge, who is that big name? Richard, are you sleepy? Oh, bro, I'm just... Um, it's interesting. That's an yeah, interesting I, no, I'm curious as to how they do the value. Because I'm like, I always thought like the Yankees were Yankees, Cowboys, again, how much their valuations of their of their overall brand. Yeah. Those are like generational brands. I would even say Red Sox, right? Like these things that just have, like, we, we you know, one of the, one of the, jokes about the warrior fans is that they a lot of them just showed up in the last decade yeah. you know and you wonder yeah. kind of like when lebron when he leaves when, he, when mm-hmm. he leaves when steph does retire in three four years i'm yeah. i'm curious what happens to the brand because lebron um, leaves the have- lakers i change the lakers yeah fair we just have a couple more topics uh we got to talk about Cavs boston how much was that? I mean, you mentioned it, obviously, Dean Wade, his performance in the fourth 20. They were down 22 to start the fourth quarter. The Boston Celtics had won 11 in a row. Jason Tatum called it a mentality loss. How much does that follow, fall on uh, Joe Missoula? Uh, how much does this say about the Cavs? And I do want to know, do you think the Cavs or Bucks will finish with the higher seed when it's all said and done? Right now, they're neck and neck in the Eastern Conference, two and three, obviously. Mm, I think the Bucks will finish high. I think... I think these type of things happen. If you are like, hey, if we lose, it's because Dean Wade makes 50,000 threes in a quarter, we're living. Uh, you just, who are you saying? Like, did Dean Wade beat us or did fucking Donovan Mitchell beat us? Like, or any, you know, I know he didn't play, but any of those others. I just think, again, 
these things happen. Uh, we talked about the uh, Cavs needing a big win. That was a big win for them. I think they're going to constantly – they need to constantly get these big wins um, to show me that they can compete when it comes to the playoffs because then we saw them the other night they lost to the Knicks with no – and the Knicks had nobody. Yeah. I, I think the Cavs, because they want to get home court, I like teams that want to fight for I think Milwaukee, I think they want to fight for home court, but I think there's a level of confidence that comes former champions. Like, they get it. They want to be healthy. They're not going to be pushing through. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, I, I think I think the Cavs will finish number two. I, they need to win a round. If they, if they, they need to – Cavs Cavs are a team that needs to win a round back. Or else that thing going to get – if they don't win a round, listen, bye. There's no point in doing it. Bye. You can't win a round? Yeah. A round? Well, I look at it in the sense of two years ago, they lost double play-in games. Then last – and they were fourth at the All-Star break. Last year – they're the four or five bad matchup, you know. They get, they get they got swept. They got swept. They got drugged they got dr- by the Knicks. Bad Knicks embarrassed. And this year, look, their team is healthy. They're cooking. They're they all these positive things. You gotta win around. You gotta mm-hmm. win around. And that, but that's also part of building. That it takes time to build these things. And so, um, they got all the talent. They're 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 the team that I think if I had to say which team has the most pressure to win a first round matchup. Oh, shit. I, I think it would be them. For sure. I understand that Zion Williamson has to make an all-star game first. I get it in terms of what he said. But will we see Zion Williamson in the dunk contest? If he makes the, all- if he makes the all-star game, I, he should be an all-star. Zion, if he says Z- Zion, should be a, if Zion should have been an all-star. Like, mind you, injury, so I don't blame that stuff. But if if someone told you, that Zion would lock in and he'd be a 10-time All-Star, no one would bat an eye. Like, he's like, yeah. So, yeah, if he does what he's supposed to, he should be an All-Star and he should be there. I love that for him. I think if Zion does it and let's say, obviously, Mac is there, let's say Ja makes an All-Star, I wouldn't say he would do it. Let's say, I don't know, somebody else in a three-point contest like uh, Trey Murphy you know, mm-hmm. somebody like that, they would do it. Like, you just need one or two all-stars to say, hey, I'll do it before you get it. I think it would be funny if LeBron was in it at 40. <laughs> that would be hilarious. That's genius, Channing. would be like, hey, I'm 40, and I'm up in here dunking with y'all young fellas. What if they had Zion and Braun dunk contest, like Steph and uh, Sabrina, just a two-man game? Wouldn't that be fun? They dunk completely different. Braun is a one foot dunker, which would make it. And fun. he does like the power dunk, where Zion's a two foot, one two power, big ass Dominique type dunk. Would you so tune in for it? Like. Yeah, I got to. I work there, Allie. Good lord. I was testing you. Um, okay. Defensive player of the year. D- Victor Wembyama. Fuck no. Okay, I'm going to give you numbers, Channing. I'm going to give you numbers to back it up. What is your bubble doing? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I can't see it. It was going down. All right. When he is on the floor, San Antonio has the sixth best defensive efficiency rating. When he's off, they rank dead last. Rudy Gobert, 33.3 minutes per game, 12.8 rebounds, 2.1 blocks, 0.6 steals. Victor, 28.8 minutes per game, 10.3 rebounds, 3.4 blocks, 1.3 steals. I'm not giving defensive player of the year because he gets a lot of blocks to the fucking worst team in the league. He gets they're 24. They're, it's not his fault. It's not, not his fault. Stop, stop saying that the best player on the team, it ain't always his fault. I'm not saying that they're a good team, but why are we going to give him a war? We're going to give him rookie of the year and defensive player of the year when, again, Chet Holmgren, Chet Holmgren's on the number one fucking seed. Minnesota has Rudy Gobert. They're the number two seed. And it's like, well, look at his number. Who do you not play with Jaden McDaniels? We were playing with Jaden McDaniels. Come on, bro. He, Rudy Gobert is playing with two and a half all stars. Rudy that, Gobert is a certified all star. Hang on, Channing. No. We can't just we make can numbers. Take the mic bro. Just a little bit away so we can. No, no, Channing. No. I'm, not just, Channing, I'm not disputing that the kid is great, but let's fucking reward winning. And if your franchise is dog shit, 
If your franchise is dog shit, then leave in three years and go to a place. But let's not reward, let's not reward the last place team with rookie of the year. Okay, that's fine. That you can give that. I'm saying you can give that. I'm saying my argument is Chet averaging 18 a game and no one has ever hit 153s, 100 and something blocks and done the things that he's done on the number one seed. And it's like, well, look at Wimby's numbers. And it's like, come on, Channing. Defensive player of the year, I get the on and off. I get the on and off. I'm not saying that the dude is not fucking great, all defense. But the defensive player of the year is going to potentially go to a team that's in last place, and we're going to say it's not his fault. Half of his blocks, they're not last. They're twenty four. Half of his blocks, they're not last. Half of his blocks come because they're so shitty on fucking defense, and they don't guard anybody. So he actually gets rewarded. Because he's guarding against non, because he's blocking shots because of terrible defense. I've been on shitty teams. I don't get three blocks a game. What the, that doesn't make sense. How does it not make sense? So if you're you're you're, you're punishing, punishing him. It's not punishing. It's not punishing. We're rewarding. You're the, punishing you're him. Reward, punishment no, you're and not. rewarding are two different things. You're rewarding a good player. You're rewarding a good team. So okay, so okay, say this next year. Is this a team award or is this a fucking individual award? Nobody has a bigger impact defensively than this oh, really? player. Why? Because why? his why? team sucks. Why? why does he have why because does he have, his team sucks? Impact? Because he is good at defense. He's the best defensive player in the NBA. Rudy Gobert is playing with Carl Anthony oh, Towns, yeah, yeah. who's seven he foot. Sucks Jaden McDaniels, who is a certified first team all defense. Anthony Edwards, the next face of the league. Up. He is also uh, playing with other great players. Oh, His job Jesus is simple. Christ. Stand there, be huge, don't fuck it up. When you're playing on a First, shitty you're team say, and I you're can't. 20 years old, okay, exactly. no, no, let me finish, let okay, me finish, okay. let me finish. When you're playing on the Spurs, and you have to make up playing defense like that. Hey, here's our coverage. Oh, you fucked it up. Now I got to play my guy and your guy. It's harder. His impact is obviously seen on a they're shitty team. They're fucking 13 wins. They're in last the fucking best. place in the Western Conference. Yeah, let's, let's They're not. Go. No, no, no. They're not last. There are two teams that have nine, nine wins. They're Name last up. in the Western <laughs> Conference. That we're talking, we're talking overall the league. Richard, no, I, no, I'm not saying that you have an impact. impact. I don't. He can't I, play 48 minutes. I'm, I'm, Channing, Channing, he can't play 48 I'm minutes. I'm not saying the dude's not nice. I'm not saying he's not fucking good. Guys. But when in fucking history have Guys. we ever given the defensive player of the year to somebody that finished on the 15th on the team that's ranked 15th? Never in history. Never in history. Never in NBA sure. history, Channing. Come on, brother. I, I'm sure? just. You'll look back and be like, "Yep, we made a mistake." I'm fucking looking back. Remember on, when? On, remember when the MVP for the Finals MVP was almost given to a, a player that didn't win the championship? You talking about LeBron averaging a triple double? Mm-hmm. He didn't win. Yeah, that was different. He should have got it. You can't be you. You're the numbers. This is the thing. It's weird because it's like you're like, well, he's not playing with good players, so we're penalizing him for being for being on a shitty team. That's fair. I hear what you're saying in that, but the other part about this is that awards should go to impacting winning. It should go to impacting winning, not just numbers, right? Like that. That's my only thing. If if a guy is going out there and giving up thirty offensive get, or getting thirty rebounds a night, but he never contests a shot, so if I don't contest a shot and I just go and chase, well, he led the league in rebounding, yes, but his team was tr- dog shit because he wasn't doing the things. I'm not penalizing Victor. I think Victor is going to win five Defensive Player of the Years. He's going to do all the shit. I'm not. I'm not penalizing. Him. But to say that you are the last place team. And then say that he is the best defensive player in the league. We are not. What more can he do? What more can so, he so do? Richard, but he's not he impacting winning. His turn. Like, but, he but his block shots are turn? not. Wait, why are we? we Rudy him? has to do less. Rudy has to do less. He has to stand oh, there. Don't, don't, he's won with. multiple defensive players. Okay, that's Rich that's also fair. has. Rich also that's has Chet winning the. Play with Jaden McDaniel. I come. 
I come from. Yes, and he won Defensive Player of the Year when he had Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell, who don't fucking guard anybody. This my well, Mike Conley is a great defender. He's not a by great the way, great defender. Slow down. He was a great not, defender. My, and, and we'll defender. stop it on this because I, I yeah, this, we will. Stop We're gonna stop this is what this is what I'm gonna say. I want to reward winning. I believe that if you give that Rookie of the Year is different because you can't control where you go. I like Chet because he he's on good teams and he has to. So because you're also penalizing Rudy by saying he doesn't have to do anything because he's on a good team. So you're penalizing Rudy for being on a good team, but you don't. But you want to give you want to give cre- credit to him to 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 Victor because he's on a bad team, right? My only thing is this: if you start giving out awards to the last place thing, go. It should impact winning. If you are, are really the best defensive player in the fucking world, your team should not be last place. That's my only argument. And if that's on the organization and the Spurs... Record-wise, what are they defensively, Allie? What are the Spurs they're, defensively? They're dead last when uh, in defensive efficiency when Victor is not on the floor. And they are sixth. When, when he's they, not on, on the it's floor. Like, what are they when he it's is? it's fucking Six. team. It's, I, I, sixth? They're top 10 when he's I'm when done. done. You know what? This has been a great episode. Thank you. Thank you. I just, it just proves my point. He can't play all game. They're six, oh, Richard. Okay. They're in defensively fucking last place, when he bro. Played. They're in last place. That's fine. As a team record, They're then fire the GM. Fire the, the, the coach. Internet what are you talking about? Like, what, what are you talking? So they're dead last and then they're six. Oh wow! So what? What is what? What is their defensive rank as a fucking team? Because he does play thirty minutes a night, so he is playing the majority of the game. What are they? The majority of the game he's playing. What is it? So we're gonna take the. Allie, what are what they? are they? When, he, when Victor's on the floor? No, 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 no. I'm not talking about on the floor. I'm talking about over the course of the game as a, as team. a team. I'll have to look it up for you. That's what, that's what I'm, that's my saying. As a, because by the way, hang on. Though, by the they way, could Richard, be awful scoring though, Richard. That's what their record. If you're sucks. just going off of the fact that it's simply them being that, last place, they're 24th. They're 24th as a team. Okay, so having said that though, like part of the MVP discussion, guys will get slighted because of who they play with, like Jason Tatum. Like Jason Tatum, that was a part of the conversation. Or I mean, Nikola Jokic. Like it's been but a it's, part of Giannis. It's been a part of the conversation. If this, if Wimby wasn't, so, if Wimby wasn't Wimby, I don't think we would be having this conversation. If Wimby wasn't this unicorn, and we're talking about offensively, you're talking mm-hmm. about this great, like thing that we that we really truly have never seen. If mm-hmm. he was, if he was a a, a normal player putting up the defensive numbers, rebounding box, putting up the defensive numbers, we would not give it to him. We would not give it to him. If he was a, a, just a defensive player, if he was Ben Wallace and he was putting up these numbers on a terrible team, we would not give it to him. That's why it's never been done in history. If we want to drink the Wimby Kool-Aid and say he's a future face and start throwing the stuff at him, he's going to meet up with it. He's going to get it. Agree. Right. I personally thought Carmelo Anthony should have won rookie of the year over LeBron because Carmelo led a team to the postseason. Right. They let and he was the rookie and was led led them average 20 points a game and was the best player on a team that went to the postseason as a rookie. That's fucking hard to do. That's my only LeBron thing. Still won it. Yeah, LeBron won it. Right. But again, Carmelo had Kenyon Martin, Nene. He had a bunch of guys on his team. But he showed up, was the best player, showed up every night, averaged 20 points a game, and went to the postseason. That's why, like, if I had a vote, I would have voted for Carmelo Anthony as Rookie of the Year over LeBron. That's not LeBron's fault that he had a bunch of shitty teammates. Like, Bron, Bron averaged. Which is what, but that's what Channing's saying with Victor. It's not Victor's I, fault. But it, and, it, and it ain't Chet's fault. But Chet now has, if Chet okay, makes so two turnovers. We're talking about defensive but, player, but Richard. My, but, defensive but, player. Defensive okay. player of the year. If we're just going to make, if we're not going to make it, when we say it's a team award, if we just want to make it just purely stats and guys can go out there and block shots and get all rebounds and their team can finish 24th. And it's like, but when I'm on the court, we're six. When I'm off the court, we're last. But overall, as a team, we're 24th and we're in dead last dead last in our conference, and that's the person we're going to give the best defensive player of the year award. Richard, they are awful at scoring. That's how you win the game. You have more points than other teams. This is a defensive award. What is his impact on the defensive end? Show me a player that has a bigger defensive impact 
and then I'll be quiet. Show me a player that has a bigger defensive well, impact I don't, I, than Wemby. I don't know where Rudy ranks for his defensive efficiency. I don't know where. It's not that is. much. I don't. I don't, I don't I'm told. saying. I, I'm telling you, I don't know. I look. We look. I I respect your opinion. My opinion is different. I just don't believe that we should give out a fucking award to the last place team because his numbers are great. That goes against everything that we have fought for our entire lives. Individual numbers should be purely based off of team. When we start dissecting, when he's on the court and when this, 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 and blah, 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 that's there to make arguments, and I get it. I just think that every single thing, Lute Olsen, Every single thing that you have been taught over the course of your basketball career to give an award to the last place thing because his numbers are good, I just feel like that goes against the culture of fucking winning. That's my opinion. I'm not like I, I understand what you're saying. Like we're having a legit conversation because it is true. He is a fucking high level candidate. He, he will win multiple ones. But last place. And then we want to point to, well, when he's on the court, at their sixth, they're in last place, bro. That. I, I just can't get on board with that. I, I just don't think when we are looking at defensive player, right, you cannot penalize him for that individual. It is an individual award, right? You are penalizing him for his GM's decision to put a underdeveloped team out there. You don't win or lose in today's game because a guy is – one guy can't guard five. But his impact to give his team even a sort of chance is the greatest in the league. I said Rudy's got him. What do you mean? <laughs> Does he? Defensive uh, rating. Yeah. Yeah. Victor's at 107.3. Rudy's at 104. Okay. I'll be quiet. I digress. <laughs> No, no, but I hear you. No, but Shane, I'm not. I wasn't shitting on your point, bro. The fact that we're talking about the rookie winning that, I'm not. No, about, we can argue. I know, I'm not. I, but this is what well, I want to be clear. I just think that winning, winning means something, and we got, we got to make. That's sure. not. But that's not the defensive. He's okay. he can only affect winning so much. Well, this is this not just this the same this year. Then this ain't his year. And the season of okay, debate. <laughs> then this ain't his year to win it. What'd you say? In the season of debates, <laughs> who are your top two <laughs> debaters? <laughs> Wait, Allie, what is the difference between when the minute when he's on the court uh, and when he's off? Oh, yeah. that's a deep dive. Yeah, okay, we're never going just in. post it on here. You know what? I, you know what? I, I have this right here. Their team is in last place in the conference. <laughs> that's that's the stat I have. Tomorrow right night, here. UCLA, Arizona. Who wins? Arizona. Stop it. Stop it. I gotta go, guys. I love you guys. It's another okay. edition of Road Trip. Right. <laughs>